Here to call the order, the, let everyone know the board does not write the zoning ordinance, but does have the authority to grant relief from where practical difficulty or unnecessary hardship would result. The board will vote on each agenda item oh, following a public yeah. hearing. Mm -hmm. Use variance requests require a minimum of six affirmative votes in order to grant the request variances. Non-use variance requests a minimum of five affirmative votes in order to grant variances. If you would like to request the board table or adjourn your case due to the absence of a full board, you must inform the chairperson immediately after the public hearing. Petitioners shall do their best to limit presentations to 10 minutes. Each participant in a public hearing shall do their best to limit comments to three minutes. And looks like we have a full board today, so that's good. Uh, so first thing is uh, approval of minutes for February 9th, 2023. Is there any uh, motion or comments regarding those minutes? Ms. Zucker. I'll move to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Sorry. Uh, everyone at the same time, so whoever wants it. <laughs> we'll just say, uh, mm, Not me. You need to actually have a question. I'll go, I'll, I'll you have you. a question about them? Yeah. But the, go ahead. No, no, questions first about the... Okay, the, yeah, I'm just, I'm reading the minutes, and it says that we moved uh, that the appeal um, of this to permit... It does. Oh, I see. Okay, never mind. I take it back. Okay. I, I see the postponed at the end. All right. I'll give it to Nancy. Yeah. Um, oh. I'll give the second to Nancy. <laughs> Since everyone raised their hands. Um, Nancy won. Nancy won. All, the, uh, all those in favor of uh, approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion carries unanimously. We move on to old unfinished business. Uh, first one is case number 23-02-04 for 615 or 614 Irving Avenue. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this variance request pertains to 614 Irving Avenue. Uh, looking at the subject site, it's located within the one family residential zoning district and it currently contains a lot area of 12,206 square feet. Uh, the site currently contains a two-story, 1,376 square foot single family dwelling. And the petitioner is proposing to demolish that dwelling. And in its place, they would like to construct a new single family dwelling with an attached garage. Uh, the zoning ordinance does limit the maximum allowable usable, usable squ square footage for a single family dwelling to 3,500 square feet and this house is proposed to have 5,521 square feet of usable floor area. Last month, I had pointed out that if you look at the second floor plan, you'll notice that a large portion of the second floor is actually an opening to the lower level and it's not, cur it's not being proposed to be comprised of actual flooring or additional rooms, but the zoning ordinance does still include openings to lower levels in its definition of usable floor area, so staff did include that portion of the second floor in our total calculation. Um, it was established last month as well that even if staff did include, did not include that opening into the um, total calculation, the applicant would have still needed a variance because the proposed house would have still exceeded the 3,500 square foot usable floor area cap, but it would have been a much smaller variance at only 683 square feet. Uh, so with that being said, the petitioner is requesting a variance to waive 2,021 square feet from the maximum allowable usable floor area of 3,500 square feet. Um, at last month's meeting, the petitioner did ask that the item be postponed to the March ZBA meeting. Um, since the February meeting, the petitioner did elect to modify the site plans to show a ceiling height of 17 and a half feet in the portion of the second floor, which descends to the first floor. Um, that's visible on page four of your packets and it's clouded. Um, the last page of the plan set, <clears throat> let me get to that. That would be page eight of your packets, also includes new drawings, which show the height of the ceiling of the first and second floors respectively. And the building elevations have also been modified to show a portion of the roof ridge line being decreased. Um, if you wanna compare that, uh, modified elevation on page six to what was presented last month, that can be found on page 17. I can show you the difference. What was presented last month is the colored image. And then if you look at that roof line, the smaller side, going back to the modified site plan, you can clearly see that it has been decreased in height. Um, staff is of the opinion that even with the lowered ceiling height, 
Um, nothing would hypothetically prohibit the ceiling from being removed and a higher ceiling from being constructed and new floor joists being installed to create a full second floor. So with that being said, the added detail would not change the variance which is being requested for. Thank you. Okay. Any questions for staff? Mr. Uh, just one quick question. So I understand the applicant adjusted the plans, as you mentioned, but at, at what height would staff not consider that second story or, or floor area? Is that 15 so, feet, 16 feet? You know, so is, there, is there a certain height? Sure. One, one important thing to point out is that ceiling height is not dictated by the zoning ordinance. It's dictated by Michigan Residential Building Code. Um, with that being said, um, openings to lower levels are still included in the zoning ordinance's definition of usable floor area. So with that being said, even with the decreased height as shown on the floor plans, we still have to include that area in our total calculation. Thank you. <clears throat> and I, no. <coughs> I think you said it and I missed it. Yes. The, uh, even if the the opening the floor opening were not included, what would the it would uh, have variance been, need? It would have only been six hundred eighty three square feet. Okay, just trying to keep that straight in my head. Okay. All right, thank you. Any other questions for us? So I guess then the only way to eliminate them from building above this space or filling it in would be to potentially only approve a variance of whatever that may be. If it is, if everyone's open to it, six hundred eighty three square feet. Would that be an acceptable way to prevent, prevent them from building above that space? Uh, I would say it's advisable to still go with staff's uh, calculations. So to, uh, um, that would be to approve or deny the variance as listed in the report. Additional questions for staff? Mr. Um, I know we generally disfavor doing conditions, but is, is the, would it be possible to do like a condition where we approve it subject to condition that they don't construct you know floor joists there and and actually expand the the, the living area there well, just well i would say that would be a challenge uh, okay. because hypothetically if someone did want to do that they could just come in for a building permit to do that work and there's a chance that the planning staff would never be able to see that to note that there's no way to note that in their file that are on the on the property in the software that we use I'm, i just i it's don't not, know what our it's limitations not impossible, are but it's it's oftentimes a challenge so if you if you wanted to go that direction it's, it's possible and, and we would as staff work to make sure that that was adhered to okay just wondering Mr. I guess just one last follow-up. Are we yes. not allowed to reduce the amount of variance if that's open to all parties? You know, I, I know you mentioned to, to stick with staff's request, but as a board, are we not allowed to re, to approve a lesser variance? Well, of course you can, but even, even if that's the case, um, it would to do what you're suggesting would require a modification to the site plan. If I'm understanding you correctly, even if we lessened it in your eyes unless they take it out to the fact that you can't like they would have to lower that ceiling to the point that you even if they took out the ceiling mm -hmm. there's no way with the joist that you could put a floor in then that would be allowed otherwise if it stays as it is with us reducing the uh, variance they'd have to figure a way to cut out the square footage that would be counted by staff mm -hmm. And, and I'll add that one of the ways that that could possibly done, be accomplished is if they lower the roof line so that there is no attic space to, so to speak, tap into to be able to have that height clearance to have a full second story. So it would require an even further modification to their elevation. Basically create a cathedral ceiling in there by dropping it down, still giving openness with having a cathedral ceiling, but definitely not allowing any other floor. Mm -hmm. All right, is there any other questions for staff or are we ready for the petitioner to come forward? <coughs> All right, seeing none, <coughs> petitioner may come forward and uh, represent your case and your updates. Good evening again. 
Uh, my name is John Jacoupi, the designer, and this is Ben Schomer, the homeowner. Uh, before I go on, uh, I want to address an issue regarding the ceiling height. In Michigan, the planner is correct. It's dictated by Michigan uh, Residential Building Code. And that height is 6 feet 8 inches. You cannot have any ceiling less than 6 8 and be considered a living space. So with that in mind, we have a 10-foot first floor ceiling, and we're uh, designing it with a 1-foot floor structure. So that would take us to 11. And the reason I spec 17.6 as the height of that grand space, if we call it, that would be 6 feet 6 inches, which would then preclude anybody from adding a second floor and doing a legitimate second floor. Now, the issue arose that, what about in the attic space? Well, those are going to be uh, pre-engineered wood trusses, and that's kind of a, I mean, it's not impossible, but it's kind of a big deal to modify those trusses. You'd have to get an engineer to modify the, or the trust company. The building department would be aware of that, and I'm sure planning would have some say in that. But this homeowner doesn't intend on doing that. I mean, that's the whole point of this design, is to have that grand space. Otherwise, we would have just did a conventional two-story home, you know, with 10-foot ceilings or 9-foot ceilings, whatever. So I don't know if we need to, you know, do something and, and you know, seal it in blood or something, but that would be our position, you know, we oh, would not I, intend on doing that. I appreciate you answering that because that was going to be one of my questions, so, <laughs> so, if you knew what that height was. So, and also too, and one of the reasons we modified it because that was kind of the assumption the six be below that six foot eight so that we would not be categorized as a full two, you know, second floor over that space. So I appreciate the planner and their, you know, staff, the work they do, but to me, it seems like that would not be a, a viable solution for this client or anybody else, really. They just would not, there's no point to it from a practical standpoint. Yeah, and, and just to be clear, <clears throat> it, it, everything is spot on, and our, our intentions of our complete candor in everything that we're doing are not trying to, you know, create a larger home or fill in a vaulted area or represent hardships of any sort. We're trying to put it all out there and as being, you know, pro development, you know, for the city and, and for our family and, and trying to, you know, compromise to the best of our ability for what we think all parties will win and, you know, fits within the math and the code and the scope and the beauty of, of the home and the street. I'm didn't follow exactly how the exterior elevation is going to change with the changes you made. Well, there really aren't too many changes uh, cosmetically. I did lower that roof over the two-story space, mm -hmm. so the ridge is now three feet lower than it was before. I took, a, I'm sorry, uh, two and a half feet. I took two, uh, two and a half feet off, and I just lowered the eave line where the gutters are. That's all I did. It didn't change the look of the house tremendously, other than if you look at the front elevation, the left side of the roof will be lower than the right side, substantially lower than it was before. Two and a half feet, Correct. approximately. Now, if there's a number that the planning department is suggesting that would preclude anybody from doing a two-story space, you know, we'd welcome that, and you know, we're we would address that as a condition of approval. You know, we would accept that. Are your, uh, I should ask, what's the elevation of the bottom of the trusses that are planned for that space? Because that would pretty much dictate it. If it's at six foot eight, then it's basically ensuring you can't. It's six six. Okay. So well, if I you know the ceiling six six, but the trusses are right above that ceiling. Correct. Okay, so then that's basically six seven. Worst case. I mean, I just went two inches under the six eight the, you know theoretical height so there's no magic number it could be even less you know if that's something that uh, we had to do Mr. Clark. yeah not that a, a lookout is critical but it looks like you have I'm looking at the building section a and as you walk up the second store you can look down into that space so if you drop that ceiling height lower it's going to be a challenge obviously if that ceiling's at five, six, or six feet, you'd be ducking under to look at it. So that ceiling is I at, understand that too. The ceiling is at six, six. So if you're standing there looking down into the great room, I'm five ten, so it'd be a little bit higher than sure. me. And normally a header is at six, eight, 
on a conventional construction, so it's just a little bit below that. It's not going to be a detriment to the design. We could still make it work. Sure. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Any other questions for the petitioner? All right. Seeing none, thank you. We'll open up to a public. Uh, is there any comments from the public regarding this case? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Anyone? Once? Twice? All right. Three times. We'll bring it back to the side of the board. Is there any motions and or discussion? Mr. Reddy, I think I saw your hand up first. Um, I'm, I wasn't going to make a motion, but just to start the discussion. You know, it looks nice and uh, the petitioner is nice, but this is a situation where they're tearing down an existing house and starting from scratch. And there doesn't seem to be any reason not to build a house that fits the code uh, that exists when they bought the house. So I'm looking at it and I don't see a way to say, you know, I, I asked the petitioner last month, what's the practical difficulty or hardship here? And he said there wasn't one, he just wanted the house that way. So that doesn't seem like something that we should be doing. And then, you know, if I consider the justice to the neighborhood, they're going to have to take down those trees to the south, and it's going to be a wide house on that street. So I'm having those reservations. So I just want to put that out there. Ms. Well, along the same lines, I don't know what the original intent of the zoning ordinance is, but I don't think they cared about how many square feet were actually inside that were usable as opposed to how big a structure you're looking at in the neighborhood. And that's what I'm concerned about. It's so much bigger than every other structure. Um, and because it has the 3,500 square feet, the 5,500 square feet capability, it's going to look bigger than all the other houses. And that's my concern, that it won't fit in the neighborhood and it won't do justice to the neighborhood. Mr. Moore. Yeah, I'm looking at the requirements for a non-use of variance, and I'm, I'm struggling to um, see that they have met letter D, which is the alleged hardship has not been created by any person presently having an interest in the property. Uh, but my understanding from watching the last meeting was that they bought this property with the house that is there, and they have an ownership in that property and you know i'm struggling with letter d so this one yes I, I won't be in support of this motion i, I don't see this as a five thousand square foot house i mean I, I well there's no motion right now there's just discussion oh well, anyways i won't be in support of of that um uh, i don't see this as a five thousand square foot house I, I i take the applicant at their word for this for this for the area and in many cases, we have granted approval for homes that are less than 30% of lot coverage, and they have, they do have that. They're less than 30% here. There's any here? Anyone have a motion one way or another on this variance? Before there's a motion offered, perhaps Mr. Bobo's camera Perhaps he can refresh the board's memory as to, even if we re discount or remove that open area that we're referring to, even if we remove that, if it still needs a variance from the 3,500 square feet. So you're, you have an understanding uh, as to if we remove that area, whether it still requires a variance and whether you, you, sh you should keep that in mind as you uh, make, a, make a motion and head towards a deliberation. Thank you, Mr. Andrew. And, and what is that, if we take away that calculation, what is the square footage of the floor you can actually walk on? Uh, would that be on the second floor? No, I mean the second floor the plus the first floor. The second floor plus the first floor, so combined, the yeah. entire, it was 3,000 square feet. Well, no, I think on the yeah. project summary here, it says 3619 for... So yeah. if you look at the initial staff report, Go ahead. Further down, we do include our floor calculations. So without that, you can come to the. 
So that square footage, like square floor that you would walk on. Yes. Very nicely put. That would be uh, 4,183 square feet, approximately. So, oh, Nancy, go ahead. So about that 600, is that that 683 square feet Correct. that we're talking on to the 35? That would be above and beyond the 3,500 3, floor yeah, that you can walk on. That's what I was looking at. how an appraiser would look at it. Mm -hmm. Any other? Any so to, to Mr. Klatt's previous point, the board can grant less of a variance than a, re a request than originally listed. Uh, you can't grant more of a variance, but you can always grant less of a variance if you choose to do that. Mr. Reddy. Uh, I move that we deny the request. Okay, is there a second? Ms. Sukin from the second. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Reddy. Oh, well, you know, as I, as I mentioned earlier, um, it's, um, it should meet uh, the four criteria, and I feel that it's not meeting uh, criteria B, that it would do substantial justice to the applicant as well as the, uh, give substantial relief to the owner and justice to other property owners in the neighborhood. Um, and see that it's due to a unique circumstance of the property. I, I don't, this isn't terribly unique. Um, and D, that the hardship has not been created by any person having a, presently having an interest in the property. I mean, this is, they have the ability to build any house they want here, and um, there doesn't seem to be any hardship or restriction other than their desire to have a bigger house. So, uh, for those reasons, I feel like uh, we should not grant the request. Okay. Ms. Zukin, do you have anything to add? No, it's, they have to show that all four criteria are met, and I don't think any one of them has been met because they can use this property to build a house that's um, permitted in the neighborhood. So I think all four are missing. Okay. Other comments? Mr. Clinton. Okay, so now we will not be in support of this motion. So <laughs> I see this as a 683 square foot overage here. And as I mentioned before, they're still under the 30% lot coverage, and we've granted granted variances for, for greater than that while still maintaining less than 30% lot coverage. So for those reasons, I won't be in support. Ms. Um, I will agree to not be in support. I think this house is going to look nice in the neighborhood. I think that it does meet the size of the lot and that the square footage, and I don't know if we have to change the variance. You said to make it the variance request smaller, if that's what oh. this one really is. I guess I'm kind of confused on that part. Okay. Other comments? Well, I won't uh, be in support of this variance, even though uh, of the motion for the variance. Um, I'm a little torn, but what's overriding it is that this lot is an oversized lot of over 12,000 square feet, so it's double the normal size lot, which has the requirements of 3,500 square feet. And if we look at what we've done with oversized lots in Vincetta areas and whatnot, we usually allow them, for the most part, as long as they don't go too crazy, uh, up to the 30%. Um, I don't think it's going to cause harm to the neighborhood. Um, if there was, he would have had neighbors come out and objected. They were all notified. No one came out at all speaking for or against. Um, they sort of have, did not create the hardship of having an oversized lot with the city having a restrictive requirement of what size house you can put on any size lot. So that and that hardship is sort of not their own bringing upon. Um, so that's already three right there. Um, and like I said, the plight of the landowner is due to the unique circumstances of it being a double-sized lot. So because of that, I see they have the opportunity to meet all the hardships as they request to get this. And they've lowered down the ceiling to try and... It, it, I bet if they would have drew in that section with the framing and show the framing was right above that six foot six, it would have then not been counted by staff and we would have been down to just 683 square feet for the overage. Um, but because it wasn't drawn in there, there's no way for staff to not say, hey, you can't do that. So. I can understand that point. So because of all those, I'm not in favor of this motion. Any other comments? 
No? Okay, we'll move to vote. Please raise your hand. Signify by saying aye if you're uh, in favor of this motion to deny the variance. Aye. aye. Okay. Opposed? Nay. 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 Okay. Motion fails. Uh, is there a motion in the opposite direction? And with the Mr. Gavin, any so moved. stipulation? No, so <laughs> okay. moved. Okay. Is there a second, Mr. Clatt? I'll second. All right, uh, Mr. Gavin. I, I'm just, I, I agree with the, the comments that uh, were made in uh, opposition to the prior motion. I think that summarizes it quite well, and you summarized it quite well. So I'm in agreement with those. Okay. Any other comments? Mr. Reddy. So you're you're in favor of granting the full request of 2,000 square yes, feet? Yes, that was my motion. Okay. Yep. Ms. Just to um, support my position again, uh, it, it is a very nice design. I, I do like the house. Um, I don't think it can be compared to Vincetta. This is small lots for the most part. Um, they're fortunate to have a bigger lot, and I again, I think the 3,500 square feet is not necessarily the usable floor space, but it affects the overall size of the house, and that's why I'm objecting to it. Okay. Um, Mr. Moore. Um, I'll just say that you, you're the one that convinced me on my original position. Um, I do believe that D, um, the hardship there, or practical difficulty is that um, the need for the variance and you know I, I think the house will be an improvement for the neighborhood um, like you said if, if the neighbors had a concern um, we would have letters or um, people would be here so I will support this motion I will make one thing that I am leery about supporting this motion is the fact that there was no stipulation that it has to be meet the current design because if we grant it they theoretically could go back to a previous one and then we'd have possibility of a large house but that's my only concern would you like me to add that as a stipulation that is your <laughs> As the maker of the motion, you can amend your own motion. Um, perhaps that's a question for a good question for staff too to make sure if, if they were to get this granted and it would be the design would change, you wouldn't be able to do anything, correct? You can make a contingency that the um, design be no more than the square footage of the opening or that the o that opening be no bigger than that whatever that number is you, you could add that contingency and, and we'll work to try and ensure that that doesn't happen through the building permit phase okay uh, then I would like to add a contingency that the uh, opening uh, for the I guess how should I do that You'd like to make way. an amendment? I'll, to I'll move to amend my motion. <laughs> <laughs> um, that uh, we add a contingency that the opening over the, uh, what are we calling this room? The living room? Yeah, the living room. Uh, be no more than the currently designed amount of, was it 683 square feet? Or whatever that number is. I don't know who seconded I don't know what the numbers were. Is yeah. there also any control on the ceiling height at yeah, 17 we, foot 6? Yeah. Can we can we lock the height in at 17 6? They designed it. It's designed that way. It's designed that way. You may, and I think that the uh, designer had astutely pointed out that the, the trusses will prevent them from being, anyone from in the future from being able to tap into that space. So you, you may. We, we understand the logic associated with it. Okay, and the ceiling height. Is there any vote needed on this amendment or? We're good. We're good. Okay. All right, any other additional discussion? All right, seeing none, we move to vote. Please make sure you raise your hand. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay, motion carries seven to two. Congratulations. Best of luck to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. 
Next case, number 23-02-05, 1629 North Washington Avenue. If I recall, you have something of announcement regarding this case. Yes, the petitioner has informed staff that they were unable to be in attendance tonight, so they've asked that the item be postponed again until April. Okay. Uh, they did provide a letter uh, which addresses this, which we've added to the back of your packets for that item. Um, tonight, there's no further action needed by the board to further postpone the item, so whenever the board is ready, you can proceed to the next item. Okay, thank you. So that ends old business. New business is uh, case number 23-03-06, 3710 Woodland Avenue. Whenever you are ready. Mr. Murphy. This site is currently improved with a bungalow and a detached garage. If we can look at the next photo, <clears throat> we'll see that there's a, to the along the rear of the house, there is a sunroom addition. And the petitioner is proposing to remove that sunroom addition and e extend the footprint of the house to the rear and construct a second story addition. In doing so, they are compliant with the setback requirement, uh, setback requirements for the addition. However, the addition does place the total lot coverage, so all the structures on the site with a roof line, it, it pushes that over the maximum allowable lot coverage, which is 30%. The proposal is at 30.8%. That equates to 52 square feet. And so they are seeking a variance to go above and beyond the maximum allowable in order to create that footprint and do that addition to their house. All right. So basically, they will be losing the net. <laughs> Any questions for the staff? All right. Seeing none, the petitioner may come forward, state your name, and present your case. Hello, uh, Eric Heider, uh, Polyarch 44045 Grasset, representing uh, Mark Clark, the owner. Uh, as uh, uh, Mr. Murphy has uh, stated, uh, it's an existing two-story, or excuse me, a two-bedroom bungalow uh, with a uh, sunroom uh, that's kind of like not heated. So we want to remove that and add an addition. What we're doing with the uh, design is creating a laundry room on the first floor, which it does not have because it's in the basement, and putting it into the original kitchen and kind of doing an addition in the back by putting a new uh, kitchen in nook. Now, 0.8% uh, is doesn't seem like a lot but in this case it is because it is it would take off you know the whole nook area quite a bit you know on uh, uh an area that's only a few hundred square feet uh, you know 52 square feet is a lot on a point eight uh so even though it's two stories because we're creating a third bedroom uh above that but we meet all the other requirements so questions mr clark did you talk to your neighbors by any chance or share the plans with your neighbors? Any support? This I've, is Mark Clark, yeah, the no, owner. I own the property, been there for seven years. I've talked to every one of my neighbors are in support that I have conversation with. I have a new neighbor. I don't know them. They are the ones immediately adjacent to me. And probably during construction would be the only time that would hinder anybody's uh, comfort level. Thank you. Any questions for the petitioner? Another question. Mr. Reddy. Um, so we're supposed to say that there's something unique about the lot that requires uh, this variance. So uh, this, like a lot of times, there's some odd shapes and that, that can affect setbacks and stuff. But this is a simple percentage of the lot. Um, and this is a 6,000 square foot lot, which is not that unusual. So. We're not talking about where it goes, but this is just the size. So what, what would be the unique factor here that would say that you know a 30% lot coverage wouldn't apply here? Well, if, if we do lose it, part of that would be kind of losing a room that we're trying to achieve that this does not it really has, the original house really only has kind of a, a kitchen dining area kind of together. It's kind of relatively uh, compact. So by doing that, we want to kind of create a new space. Uh, so, you know, by doing that with the lot coverage, uh, we would kind of lose what we're trying to achieve. That's for the variance. And we are taking off a sunroom, you know, that's already there, so. 
and uh, where this addition is, which is on the north side, since we couldn't really do it on the on the south side because of the the original garage and the as you, if you can kind of look at the uh, design uh, on the right side, you got the driveway and the garage on that side, so we couldn't really kind of compact it because it would hinder going into the garage as a two two car garage. So I think the kind of the part of that would be kind of the existing conditions of the house, the driveway, and the, the garage in the back would kind of hinder us in exactly by pushing, kind of scrunching the addition in and in, in making it a little wider. So. All right. Other questions for the petitioner? I just have one. So this was the only solution you could come up with to add on a, another bedroom and, and a nook that you, you you think is required to make this home better. There was not any other solution, especially since this is a bungalow, and I've seen many of them with the tops taken off and done it that way. That is a solution, but that's one solution we didn't want to get into. The owner didn't want to actually get into the original roof uh, and kind of remove that part to actually create a... Uh, and an addition for a third, for the master bedroom in the original part of the house. Because it is, it is smaller, it's only a seven foot high ceiling, as you know those bungalows have, you know, only five foot knee walls and goes up to a vault that's only seven feet. So at that point, he's a little taller, so we didn't want to get into the original house. So this two story addition, even though it meets the height requirements on the front elevation, it doesn't look like a two story because we are kind of angling it back there. So that was our kind of our solution to that. Okay which unfortunately gives us a secondary staircase uh, into that portion of it. I'm just looking at the floor plan here, mm -hmm. and it looks like, can, can you go from, well, first off, it's still going to be a two-bedroom house, correct, after you do this? No, it'll be a three. It'll be uh, a three-bedroom house. Mm -hmm. And There's a bath and bedroom and then kind of the... Mm -hmm. The original you can call the loft area as a bedroom. Oh, so you're calling that a bedroom, the loft? Yeah. The it's original loft. loft, yeah, but it could be a bedroom. Okay. It's um, not, but it can be. So can you go from that or existing loft no. area from that? With this design, this? no. Two and, completely separate because we're keeping curious, the original room. Why would you not have a doorway there between whatever that would be the corner where the hallway is upstairs from the top of the stairs going into the master bedroom there's no way to get from the master bedroom into the existing loft area no because we're keeping the original roof intact it's, it's because of the roof yes the original roof is a bungalow roof so we're keeping that roof intact uh -huh. and this second story addition it, is a completely okay. separate addition to the original it house. looks like it was all one thing when i'm looking at the picture of the roof is tied together but the yeah. the original roof is exactly as is we're not touching that so that's why the original loft is remaining as is with the dormer though okay okay <laughs> mr moore uh, the the laundry room that you're putting in, what is there now? Is that's that... the original kitchen. That's so that's kitchen. the original. Yeah. Okay, got so it. you got on the on the right side, I you understand. have the side door that goes into the basement and to the upstairs loft with the driveway. So that original kitchen, since there's plumbing, is going to be the new laundry room. And so now there's just going to be the access into the back, which is the kitchen nook area. So part of this is moving the kitchen to the addition to create, create a, a first, first story laundry laundry which i'm guessing is probably something that is in the basement now it, it is in the basement in, are we in the basement to it's only going up and down steps i'm i'm trying to understand the, the <coughs> maybe practical difficulty here well the practical so, diff you know the the basement's only a kind of a michigan basement six foot eight uh it's okay. a little tough to get in there so you know bring it upstairs on the first level so most of the uh utilities now would be first level uh first for laundry room you know bathroom kitchen right. nook okay so, so that's part of the thing is yeah. relocating the kitchen to yes accommodate and that staircase of course you know those bungalows are very narrow understand. smart and so okay. not convenient i was so. just trying yep. to understand the, the practical difficulty and that's one of the issues i was seeing here so great any other questions for the petitioner? 
No? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone here from the public to speak for against this uh, case? You may come forward. State your name. Hey, I'll keep things brief. Uh, so my, I'm, my name is Zane Dufour. I don't know if I need to give all the information like we do at city commission meetings. I don't have any personal stake in this project. Um, uh, and I understand that uh, you are restricted uh, legally in terms of the actions you can take, but it does seem a little bit silly to me not to approve this. Um, it doesn't seem like that major of uh, like visual impact on, on the neighborhood to, to approve something like this. Uh, but frankly, I'm kind of biased because I think a lot of these rules <coughs> are sort of silly. Um, so that's all I had to say. Thank you so much. Yep. Anyone else? Going once, twice. All right, we'll close public and move it back to this side for motions and or discussion and or motions. Anyone? Uh, I saw Mr. Gavin's hand up first. I move approval as presented. Okay, is there Mr. Clatt to the second? All support. Oh. <laughs> he can have it. <laughs> All right, Sorry. Mr. Gavin. Um, yeah, it, it's 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 a. Uh, as the, the audience member noted, it's a relatively small ask. Um, the lot size is fairly typical, uh, you know, but it is kind of tight to deal with, you know, those longer, narrower lots. And I think that they're doing the best they can to preserve existing structures and work with what they have in order to achieve that. And I, I literally, I don't see how you could add a master bedroom like that without going a tiny little bit over, frankly. So uh, with with that being the, the practical difficulty um, and, you know, it, it does substantial justice to the neighborhood. Um, it's, uh, I think it's due to, the, you know, kind of the shape and, and the uh, goal of preserving the, the structures as they are. Uh, it, you know, it and those hardships are not, or the, not those uh, practical difficulties weren't created by them. Um, I think that uh, I think that they should should be able to do this. Right. I'd like to thank the applicant for explaining their design intent. I had a similar question as Mr. Ofac, but again, this design seems very modest, very reasonable. The, the rooms are not oversized as compared to the, the balance of the house. The addition takes place at the rear yard. It's somewhat you know, unnoticeable from the street. And you know, I looked at the plan, trying to remove you know a foot or so to squeeze that square footage down would have a severe impact on that overall layout. So I just don't. I don't think it's worth it to to reduce that anyway. So I'm in support. Any other comments? Sugan. I'll just say I appreciate how you've tried to keep the front elevation in line with what's already there, and the back elevation looks just like the houses behind it. Um, so I don't see it affecting the neighborhood in any negative way whatsoever. Mr. Reddy. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm going to be opposed just because there doesn't seem to be anything unique about a 6,000 square foot lot. So the percentage, uh, as, a, as I was saying to the question, um, if the practical difficulty is having a laundry room, I think there's more than enough room to make a laundry room, but you can't have everything that you want with that space, but it doesn't seem like a practical difficulty for that and to me. So I'll be opposed. Mm -hmm. um, I will agree with this. Um, I think the problem here when we're talking about a practical difficulty is that the house was built in, a, in an era that a lot of stuff that's there then doesn't fit our lifestyle now. Um, it's a functional obsolescence not to have laundry on the first floor or to have that bigger space for the master bedroom. I think it does a justice to the neighborhood just to have a house that fits today's lifestyle a little bit better. The one thing from a real estate standpoint, I don't like the fact that there's two separate upstairs areas where you can't get from one to another, but it, that's their choice, I guess. Mr. Moore. I will say another um, practical difficulty here is the fact that they're wanting to maintain the current roof and not putting in um, a doorway. I, I mean, that is something that they have to do in their design choice here. So if you didn't have that room for the second stairway, we, we wouldn't even be sitting here. So I think that that's another practical difficulty is um, 
maintaining that existing roof. Well, I won't, it's hard, but I won't be supporting this motion. Um, I sort of agree with Mr. Reddy. This is, there's many different ways to skin this cat to, to have designed this differently. Yes, they sort of kept the, the original front slope, but as you see in the one side elevation, it just continues up. So you're already changing how it appears with adding more onto that roof. Um, they could easily have done remove the roof and put a whole second floor on and then not had to worry about coming for the additional square footage. Yes, that financially may cost more. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Um, probably does. But that's not a hardship that we look at. We don't look at financial hardships on this point. Um, I agree that this doesn't, it's not going to change one way, negative or positive, where the current addition will be because it's in the back, so that's not going to really uh, affect the neighbors around, except those in the backyard, but those in the front, it won't really affect it. Um, so I sort of see this as the point of they brought this up on them, and this was an easy solution instead of doing the right solution. So even though I feel bad about that, I, by going by what the variance requests dealing with hardship are, I have to agree with Mr. Reddy in that I don't see it, it meets them enough. Any other comments? Mm -hmm. All right, seeing none, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye and raise your hand. Aye. aye. Okay, opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay, motion carries. Six to three, congratulations. Best of luck. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, you too. We'll move on to the next case, 23-03-07-4209 Sheffield Road. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Murphy, or is that you? Or? That would be me. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, this variance request pertains to 4209 Sheffield Road. Uh, looking at the subject site, it's located in the one family residential zoning district, and there's currently a 1,875 square foot a uh, single story house with a small shed located on the site as well, which the petitioner is proposing to remove. Uh, the lot size itself is 16,766.05 square feet. Um, this parcel is different in the way that it's both a corner lot mm. and a through lot. And by a through lot, mm. that means <laughs> that it has frontage on two parallel streets. So Amherst to the south and Sheffield to the north. Uh, what the petitioner is looking to do is uh, to construct a detached garage on the west side of the property on top of the existing driveway, which is there. Uh, the zoning ordinance states that if there is a through lot which has frontage on two parallel streets and there are also other houses or structures which, are which front onto those said streets, then the minimum required front yard setback shall be applied to both sides. So staff did apply a minimum front yard setback of 25 feet to both the north and the south sides of the property. Uh, the proposed garage is going to have a setback of just 19 feet from the south lot line. So the petitioner is first seeking a variance for six feet from the minimum 25 foot south setback along Amherst Road. Uh, the zoning ordinance also does limit the ground floor area of accessory structures to not exceed 10% of total lot coverage, nor can it exceed 800 square feet. Uh, this proposed garage is only going to be 5% of the total lot coverage, but it will be 840 square feet of ground area. So the petitioner is seeking a second variance to wait 40 square feet from the maximum allowable 800 square foot ground area for accessory structures. Uh, the third thing is that the height of the proposed garage is going to be 16.8 feet, and that's measured at the highest midpoint between the peak and the eaves, which is exactly how the zoning ordinance defines how height is measured on accessory structures. Uh, branching onto that, the zoning ordinance does limit the maximum height of accessory structures to 15 feet, so the petitioner is seeking a third variance to waive 1.8 feet from the maximum allowable height of 15 feet. Uh, few other things I would want to point out to the board um, just for their knowledge 
is that the petitioner has shown on their floor plans that the garage will be serviced by electricity. Um, it will not be serviced by water, sewer, or heating, which is shown on their floor plans. And the garage itself, as well as the little attic space above, will just be used for storage as noted as well on the floor plans. So it won't be used as a habitable space. Thank you. Questions? Mr. Clatt? Yeah, the, the site plan information is a little bit vague. Is there an overall lot coverage indicated here? I didn't see that with uh, all the structures in the shed. So overall lot coverage we calculated to be just 16.2 percent. Oh, thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then is there a separate a distance between the two structures, the house and the garage? You know, other than the a potential building code issue with fire separation, is there any uh, zoning issue? I don't. I can't see. A, I don't see a dimension here. How far those two are apart? Yes, so in, in the context of the zoning ordinance, there is no current language which okay. dictates w the distance between the primary structure and the accessory structure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? I have a quick question for you. Sure. Had that garage been attached, would they only be in front of us for the six feet? Uh, or, so, if the garage was attached, they would also hypothetically need the variance for the setback, but then also keep in mind it's proposed to be 840 square feet, so they would still be exceeding the, the cap for accessory structures. So they would well, if it was attached, it wouldn't be an accessory structure. It would be part of so the... So in the zoning ordinance, we consider both attached and detached okay. garages to be accessory structures. My mistake. Yes. Then. Okay. All right. Any other questions? All right. And the petitioner, come forward, state your name and your case. Good evening. Uh, my name is Nicole Petrello. I'm representing Andrew and Judy Nemus. Um, presently, they live on a uh, home that has no lower level basement. It's actually on a cement slab. It appears, that I, as I talked to Alex previously, there was a petition or a variance uh, request many moons ago about splitting the property, not necessarily about an accessory build, uh, building. So um, we're trying to provide them a garage for their cars, their vehicles, of course, and the additional storage for storage that they can't put in their home. So that's how we, we approached it. Now, the gentleman asked earlier, what's this, the uh, space between the, the residence and the garage? It's roughly five feet. And I guess if we've, unfortunately, because it's, he really doesn't have a rear yard. Your rear yard ordinance really reads five feet in most residential homes in your area. But we, we can't achieve that here. That's why we did this way. So that's about it. Any questions? Go ahead, Jeff. Thank you for explaining the, 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 uh, the distance between the buildings. Uh, quick question. Do you have any information regarding the existing home? Like by that, I mean like maybe the height of... The, the, it's a, a, you know, the house is built. The, pitch uh, of the, roof. the house is built around 1940, so it's a typical residence without a basement, which would probably he's got an eight foot ceiling in the, in the majority of the home. But on if you look back at the uh, go back to the site plan real quick, if you go to the east side of the house, that's where the original garage was, and they converted it into a bedroom. And that's one of the, and because they put a, they split the property and, and put a residence mm -hmm. on the east side. But it's a typical old style home with eight foot ceiling throughout. Go ahead, ma'am. Yeah, the only, well, the only challenge I have, I'm just trying to understand how tall this new garage is gonna be in relation to the house ridge. Um, you know, it's a good question. I don't have an answer for it because I basically wanted an attic storage. and. Based upon what I read in your uh, uh, zoning ordinances or building codes, it has to be a complete eight, six eight minimum height. So I actually originally in my original plan, I had angles up in that I was going to do attic attic trusses, which have angles. So at the lowest point of that um, truss would be five foot. At the maximum would be eight foot. But now I had to complete. That's why I raised the roof a little bit, and that's why we went over the allowed ornaments. 1.5 but we had to, I wanted to maintain 6 8 based upon your what your code reads so I don't know the answer to the question can I find it out yes I can 
Unfortunately, Thank you'd you. have to find out. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, the, what's the the debate on that? Is it because of the appearance of the garage? Yeah, mainly mainly aesthetics. I mean, even I'm just is it is it going to be much? It's all very long. No, well, it's flying. not going to be higher because it's not quite two stories at that point. I think the I went with a seven. I think a seven. Uh, I'm sorry, eight twelve pitch is what my pitch is. Does that pitch match the house pitch? Are I think the hit? pitch on the house is probably old style, a 512. Yeah, that's just my, you're gonna have two different pitches in this. I know this is not an aesthetics uh, conversation here, but it's just, I'm just concerned about the aesthetics of those two structures next to I the think, other. well, the, the way we use the materials is gonna make the difference on aesthetics. I think the height differential, if there is, if there is, is not going to be as noticeable based upon how we finish the exterior. It, the the appearance of what I'm going to use, like I said, I'm going to go basically along the perimeter, lower perimeter. I'll use a uh, cultured stone to keep any soft materials off grade, and then build grade off of that, going up with either a lap siding, LP siding, or what they call Everlast siding, which is a very it's a composite material. Presently, he has a brick structure. It's painted brick. But aesthetically, it's going to look beautiful. I'll tell you that much. Okay. Yeah, it's just hard for me to understand that because one of our charges is to make sure it doesn't negatively impact the neighborhoods. And and I, I have no I, clue. You'll, I you'll be surprised it will not because I've done a couple of custom garages like this. It's not going to be a typical garage looking thing. It's going to tie in nicely with the house. I did a couple last year that really turned out. You know, n really nice. Even though the garage was a little higher than the the house itself, it still appeared to be very nicely done. I'm, I'm sure it is, and I'd love to take your word for it, but it'd be great to see a diagram that shows this garage okay, in context so with the Okay, so that line. part of it, if that's going to be a, a, a essence of a debate, I don't have the right answer. I wish I did. I just based it on what Alex had told me, my, my height restriction. I didn't even think about the house situation versus the garage situation, because I was told a certain height. That was it. I understand. Thank you. Any other questions? In, ahead, in the house, you said it's your house, right? It's my house. Is that an attic space up there, or is it just all frame above that first floor? Yes, there is an attic. It's not uh, usable. It's just insulation. The is it? Uh, well, in the attic, when you stand up, are you able to stand up all the way, or do you have to bend down if you're in the center portion? Um, yeah, I gotta bend down. Okay. So I was gonna say, if you if you can stand up, then that means that ridge line is definitely over 15 feet, because just looking at the side profile with this one image with the truck, the SUV, if I just do the old trick of, hey, I bring what I know is the height of that ridge line is probably six eight or seven feet right at those windows, you double that add up straight and it's. Almost fit. It's going to be darn close. 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 <laughs> yeah, I know. I, you and I both want exactness. I agree with you. Yeah, I, okay. um, Ms. Robinson. No, I was just going to say, part. I think part of the inside of the house has like a cathedral ceiling or something. Am I right? Not, no, no, actually inside, the, it's a, mostly a flat ceiling, but in the kitchen area, or I'll call it the living area, it steps up like there's like a little area that goes up like this and down. It's like a shedded roof inside that area. So that kind of takes space away from any attic area. No, it, it, there's no attic there. It's just it's like some sky, skylights, right? Yeah. There's some skylights in there. That's what I'm saying. Is it, it's there it's is, kind of a no attic goofy area. look. I, I, probably, I mean, it's a nice neighborhood, nice house, but some different things that we've never seen. Like, uh, it's on a cement slab. This is the whole reason why the storage is. We're trying to bring more storage into the home because there's no place to put anything. Originally, it was a basically a two-bedroom home. And they made it a three-bedroom home when they got rid of the garage and they split the property. And that shed is going to go away because the shed is, is it doesn't has no use. Go ahead, Nick. So if you lowered the roof line by the 1.8 feet, you're saying you wouldn't have any. Well, the, I could storage? do still do the attic storage, but I tried to achieve what the code reads because any area that you have that's supposed to be uh, available for use has to be six foot eight minimum, the ceiling height. So I took the angles out, the original plan had, I had an attic truss which had angles coming down and then falling down to the floor line of the attic. 
And at the point, at the low point, it was five feet. At the high point, it was eight foot. So I could have brought it down with a different pitch, which would have brought it down below that 1.5. But I had to maintain. I had to bring it back to six eight, which brought the roof line up a little bit. The usable space is meant for livable space. You well, can... I know, but it, it, I, and the interpretation I understood is it had to make you have to maintain six eight in any area that you're is if you use the attic storage or storage in, in in general. Yeah, Mr. Moore, is the difference here that you're putting in? A staircase and not like a, a, a fold down ladder. Yeah, a fold down ladder it, doesn't really work for if for storage, right. you know, large large items. You, it's very difficult. It's very dangerous. Okay. That's why I did the, the the three foot three foot staircase going up. Okay, and that's what I was noticing here from your. And plan. also that that also main to get that height because when you're walking up the stairs, you've got to maintain six eight from the toe of the staircase up all the way, and even at the foot at the top end, it's got to be six eight. So that's why that also right, the amount of steps going up because I have to have at least a ten foot ceiling in the garage to put a garage door in. Trust me, because I want to do an eight foot. I want to do an eight foot garage. I need I to do an eight foot garage door because he has a large pickup. So okay, that's what that's what I was. I wanted to make sure that that was a staircase. Mr. Reddy, did you have your hand up? I did. Mm -hmm. um, this is definitely a unique lot, <laughs> so I have no problem with the setback. However, looking at the size of the garage, it seems like the lot isn't affecting um, the size of the garage being over 800. Um, it seems like it could have been an 800 square foot. Garage. I could make it 800 very easily. It's not a problem. If I have to bring it back two feet because it's 25 foot. The other, the other thing is I've made it deep enough to allow them a full size pickup to go in there. Yeah. Because nor as we all know that from bumper to bumper it's nineteen feet. And you need clearances to get around the around the vehicle once you're in the garage. So if I have to bring it from thirty five feet down to thirty three feet, thirty three by twenty five, I'm within eight hundred feet. That's not a problem. If that if that suffices. The thing the big thing is the triangular portion the biggest thing is the triangular portion at the uh, the west the southwest corner which exceed, it was the original um, six feet. Because we start we yeah, start within no, the no, parameters, no. but because of the property size. Yeah, the, the, the setback, I yeah. completely understand. Um, but it was the size and the height don't yeah. seem to be unique uh, well, based if, on the geography. Again, we can also modify it. I can modify the, the, the elevation to, to get it down to the, the maximum height and working with uh, with the roof plan, I'd have to do that. As long as I'm allowed to not have to maintain a full six eight across the whole parameter of that uh, attic storage. Okay, mm -hmm. if that's all. Right, if that if that works with the city uh, requirements, because I got like I said, it was a six eight. I thought it was had to be completely six eight all the way across minimum. Uh, well, can staff confirm whether that 6-8 is required? Um, so, with, again, within the context of the zoning ordinance, um, the, the ceiling height would be dictate under building code. It wouldn't be under the zoning ordinance. So we wouldn't have mm -hmm. a necessarily a requirement for that. But, of course, when he goes for building permits, he still would have to meet the building, what the building code requires. Basically, part A, part A is the most important one, part A. Part B and C can be compromised mm -hmm. as long as, you know, I meet those requirements. Mr. Gavin. So, I don't, I don't like to ask people to redesign things <laughs> in the middle here of a meeting. Yeah. Um, just a food for thought for you. Uh, we do allow people, if you want to, talk to building department and, and figure out that kind of stuff. We have, we can, we, we have in the past tabled items so that, you know, you can, you can go take a look at those things and then come back next month. I'm one, just, one I'm, question, not, I'm not uh, requiring I, I, that. I have one question for Alex. When you determine the height of the garage or the height of the ridge or whatever you want to call it, you take it from the top to the, to the eaves and you go center point, correct? It's the midpoint between the, midpoint. the peak and the east. And if I recall, and I could have been wrong, I could have been wrong, Alex, in our conversations we had okay. prior to this meeting. I thought the indication was 18 feet. I, I could be wrong, but I thought that's what the number The was. maximum height in the zoning ordinance permitted for accessory structures at that midpoint between the peak and the eaves is 15 feet. 
15 feet. On residential is, I mean, on the residence itself is what? Or don't it, you know? It, it, does, it wouldn't really matter. Um, it would I, still, I under, it'd still be 15 that. feet for, re, for accessory structures. I'm sorry, I missed what you said. I apologize. That's fine. What's that? I said it would be 15 feet is the maximum height. All right. All right, so that's it. I don't have any, I mean, unless you have any questions for me. Mm -hmm. well, I just kind of, I have a question for staff. Would it be possible for us to say grant A and table B and C, or do they have to all be tabled? And it's better to keep it all together. Do, well, here's the bigger question. Do you have a problem with this tabling us to next month, or is this uh, something you gotta have to try to... It's up to Alex. Okay. I would I mean, suggest Andrew, that the sorry. board I'm hold the public Alex hearing. Wait, what'd you oh. say? I would suggest the board hold the public hearing. The petitioner can right, have right, a seat. Right, 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 right. We'll yeah. let you think about that. Another question for the petitioner. Well, I mean, a question for staff. They can choose to withdraw B and C if they want to compromise yes. and come down to the requirements. I mean, we have done that in the past mm -hmm. where if there's one that we wanted to approve and there's two that they didn't necessarily need they've withdrawn those that that can that be option. done that option is also there okay. is there any other questions for the petition all right well we'll let you chew on whether or not you want to withdraw delay to next month we'll one more statement i want to make yep. is as with jeff uh, was asking about the, the the aesthetics and i know it's an accessory building but there's there's always changes in elevation between uh, in a, within a building parameter between I know there's separate buildings of course, but even the change in height you have them all all over the place. So I don't think the roof lines are going to make a difference on the look of the whole the whole situation. It yes, it does there is a change, but it, aesthetically it won't be necessarily detract from the from the thing. So okay. okay? All right. All so right. we'll ask you after the public hearing what you want us to do. All right, so we'll open public hearing for any of those who want to speak for or against uh, this case. Please come forward, state your name for the record. Good evening. Uh, my name is Robert Stefani. I reside at 4313 Amherst Road, which uh, is basically at the point of Sheffield and Amherst. Um, I built my home there 20 years ago, and I've lived in, uh, through this lot now this will be the second variance request. Uh, by way of background, 10 years ago, almost to the date, we're about three months short, the, not the immediate previous owner, but the one before, was before this board, uh, requesting to, to destroy what is a, an unusual piece of land in the middle of our neighborhood. It's the welcoming piece of land when you drive in off of Greenfield. You see straight ahead of it. And the previous owner came in and wanted to split off the, the other parcel where they built a house. There's nothing that could stop that. They tore it. What was actually at that end was a garage where, that, where, where the, the new home was built. Um, she, uh, and I say she, this was uh, the, the, not the immediate previous owner. I went back and looked at my notes from that previous variance request. And what she was trying to do there uh, at that time was she wanted to waive um, uh, 12 feet of the maximum, minimum 25 required from the north setback. And it was turned down. And when that was turned down, because she tore the garage down, she simply poured a pad there. And that's what exists today. It's a non, -con I, I don't believe the, uh, the pad actually has encroachments on it because now we're proposing to build on a pad that, that is, not, uh, uh, is not compliant. And by way of background, you know, when you drive in this neighborhood, this land is very unique. It's an island in the middle of the street. It was originally uh, was going to be, a, the house was going to be a clubhouse, actually, for the neighborhood uh, and uh, to, to pass into Dickinson Park uh, behind, actually behind where I live. Um, it's a very unique parcel. It's a neat house. Uh, it was built in the 40s. It's a ranch, a, a, a rambling ranch. Um, uh, again, low roof line. Uh, they built the house next door, uh, which which didn't require any variances. Whether it looks good or not is another story. But it, the, the the issue here comes where, at, where there's no hardship. He, I understand needing a garage. I wanted bigger garages when I built my house, but I managed to I, I kept them within the the confines of the zoning ordinance. I understand wanting a garage. I think they should have a garage there, but there's no hardship. 
Why are we making, you know, this is not a house in the middle of a subdivision. You are going to build not only a garage to face when you drive in the neighborhood, you're going to be faced with a sided garage when you drive in. But now we want to make it bigger and we want to make it taller. And that's where the objection is. And I think one, a couple of the other neighbors have uh, 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 sent in some emails about this issue. The concern is the aesthetic. It's not the fact that there's going to be a garage there. The concern is how is it going to fit into that lot? Because you've got this two-story house on one end. You, it's been three minutes. Let's okay. Just wrap it up. All right. Uh, you have one. You have one. Uh, the one-story house, and now we're going to have a two-story garage. That nobody has talked about a hardship. It's we just want it there because the pad was put in by a previous owner. There's no reason that this garage cannot be built on the size that they need uh, without any of these variances. And as to the issue of a 10-foot garage door, that's unnecessary. I have nine-foot garage doors and I drive right, a full-size expedition. Right, thank um, you. You, you don't need that height to do this project. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. All right. Anyone else to speak on this case? Come forward. Um, sorry, it's public comment right now. Yeah, so hi, Dan again. Uh, I still don't have any personal stake in this project. Um, I don't necessarily speak to the height uh, variance because I don't know much about large trucks, but um, at least when it comes to waiving the setback, uh, I think as someone said, uh, this is a pretty unique lot. Um, as someone who's lived in a couple of cities that have some weird shaped lots like this, I personally like the aesthetic of uh, having like houses on lots like this that are, um, you know, like kind of optimally making up, taking up the use of that lot space. It like is something interesting to look at as opposed to just being a big kind of unused uh, stretch of grass. Um, yeah, I don't have too much to add, just that it doesn't seem like uh, that big of a deal, at least when it comes to the, the setback variants. Yeah. Anyone else here to speak on this? Going once, twice, all right. We'll close public uh, comments. And uh, the petitioner, would you like to come back forward so we can ask you if you have any thoughts on what you would like us to do, whether proceed or delay or amend any of the variances? Well, or remove, I'm I should say. I defer to Andrew on the gentleman saying making a compromise and removing B and C from the request. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess, I mean, am I allowed to ask if it would materially affect the vote if nope. we did compromise on these? Or, no, I mean, oh, I don't no, know, can, I don't know how, can, if, what we, value you guys ascribe to B and C in terms of your current votes. You, you uh, can't ask us what we lean one way or another. You okay. have to decide that yourself. Got it. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, if it makes it easier, I'd be willing to compromise, what do you think? B and C is the... B and C is the taking it down to 80 and 40 square feet and taking the height down. Okay. And by the way, that was an 8-foot high garage door, not a 10. Okay, that's fine. Everyone makes mistakes. <laughs> um, so from what I'm hearing, you want us to remove B and C from the variance request and just want to go for A? Yes. All right. Uh, staff will amend that. And then in which case, then we will proceed to discuss Amendment A. Uh, for the var or variance A for your case and vote on it then. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, discussion and or motions. Mr. Clapp. I'll make a motion to approve item A. Okay, is there a second, Mr. Gavin? Okay. Sorry, I you don't look at us. <laughs> well, I saw his hand go the same time. Fine, I'm going to give it to Mr. Moore <laughs> just because he, he, fought, he fought for it. I'll give it to him. <laughs> and Mr. Clash. Well, I think this is a lot that has true practical difficulty due to the shape, as was already discussed. So, therefore, relief from, from this would definitely help. So, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm okay with that, with that request for that setback reduction. Mr. Moore. Oh, no, I, I think that was a good compromise. Okay. Any other discussion points for this? Anyone? All right, I am, although hesitantly, I will be in supporting of this because I, I agree, this is a very unique lot. I understand the concerns of the neighbor across the street, 
with how uh, this can affect, but possibly having the height removed <clears throat> here, this will cause it to be less high of an uh, object. It's going to be in the spot where the pad is right now, and what looks like you're looking at a side of a house, you'll be looking at the side of a garage, which many times you see in other corner lots throughout the whole city. So it won't be too unusual, and plus you have those nice large trees right there too um, that we'll probably be considering to still block that view. Um, so because of that, I, I, I'm not as concerned. Any other discussion? All right, we will move to vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries unanimously. Congratulations, good luck with your garage. Mm -hmm. All right. Other business, is there any other business? Oh, Chris, we don't know. What's I going would on. just like to give a oh, friendly no, reminder to those saying. board members that signed up. Um, next Tuesday, March 14th, is the advanced CBA training offered through the Michigan Association of Planning. Thank you. All right. Uh, general public comment, is there any general public comment? Once, twice, three times. Okay, none. Uh, then who wants the mystery motion? I will look to this side and ignore this side at all. Anyone? Mr. Moore. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Mr. Reddy. <laughs> all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. We're done. It's nice of you to remember us.